What if you could have a wind tunnel on your bike? Loads of brands have promised real-time on-bike drag measurements in the past, but so far, none of them have gone mainstream. Could that all be about to change though? We are here at Palmer Park Velodrome in Reading to test out Body Rocket, a new on-bike direct force drag measurement system. Does it work? Let's find out. I don't think I'll be making the world tour next year. A watt saving of 20.4 watts. And uh, in terms of pricing, like what are we talking about? All right, so before I jump on the bike, let me just talk you through what I'm gonna be riding today. So this is the bike that we're testing on today. As you can see, it is like a BMC TT bike. And basically the body rocket system is underneath the kind of extensions, underneath the saddle, and then in the pedals. Now this thing here, this little box is the kind of like the brains of the system. But as we saw on the, the kind of other bike, the kind of more like polished prototype bike, that's eventually gonna be hidden away inside the other bits in production versions. Now essentially, the body rocket system gives you effectively like a wind tunnel on your bike by using like a scale underneath all the contact points. Because when you're in a wind tunnel, obviously everyone thinks of the kind of the airflow sucking over you, but it's actually what's measuring that drag is the scale that sits underneath the bike. But in the body rocket system, the scale is underneath the contact point. So as you're pushing through the air, it's measuring that resistive force against you. And then obviously sending it to the brains, which sends it to the Garmin up here, you get your drag figure. Up front, they've also got an aero sensor, which is you know, by another company called AeroSensor, and this is just measuring the wind speed. Now, Body Rocket did say that they were gonna develop one of their own, but there were also other people already making these on the market. And so instead of just kind of you know, having to do all that research and development themselves, they're just gonna partner with other people for this, this little bit. But on their kind of own version, it will have their own you know, technology and packaging and all that sort of stuff. And the other thing that's kind of interesting is that the, the pedal sensors also power meter pedals. So as effectively as part of this system, you're also getting a power meter pedal as well. So you won't need one on your bike if you did eventually get one. All right, so we've got the bike set up. Just gonna do 10 laps to set a sort of baseline figure see what the CDA is, and then we'll start making changes, see if we can get any faster. All right, so um, here's your baseline run. It came in at 0 0.204 meters squared. Of course, we are just recording you, just the rider, because we're isolating you from the bike. So if we take a look at the performance, we can see there's a little bit of variability when you're just about you know, kind of getting into getting your groove. And then one little, this is basically the break we saw in your, you know, changing, you know, squirming around on the bike. And then you can see your laps there. Um, still trying to get your position, we can see. But what's one of the main chunks of my work is, is actually trying to bring that expert into the room. And that expert takes a form of the Body Rocket Individualized Artificial Intelligence Network or Brian. Brian here is your extremely friendly, extremely helpful aerodynamic expert. It allows a rider to not have to think about aerodynamics, not have to think about what they're gonna make of their testing protocol, and actually just get out and ride. Because that's what everyone wants to do anyway. So here I actually had a listen to you when, we, uh, when you walked in. I actually put uh, a couple of things about the cask and you've got the cask Bambino. So I just asked Brian, give me, a, uh, give me a protocol. And because I haven't given Brian any more information, Brian's turned around and gone, hey, do a short reach, do a long reach, and do an extension angle increase, an extension angle decrease. And this is just a parameter sweep. And this is what most professional aerodynamicists will do. They'll make you do a parameter sweep to the extremes to see how your body reacts and then uh, adjust for that accordingly. Now at the bottom, Brian then says, with all these different um, runs, this is where you can then change your skin suit, change your helmet, um, and then you can actually test these different configurations in these different kind of setups, essentially. Yeah. Because although everyone likes to buy aero, the best thing to do is change your position. Yeah. So he's always gonna suggest changing your position first, because the biggest thing that have the biggest impact. Okay, so we've just done a couple of baseline runs on the bike, start making changes. We're gonna start with helmets. Now this is a Cast Bambino Pro Evo time trial helmet. In theory, should be a little bit faster than the Protonia Icon Road helmet, but let's find out. Magic. <laughs> We're 
with this, so yeah, the question I would have is like, so okay, so say if I, you know, you've given it that, it's given you the protocol, yeah, yeah. you go do it. Can you then feed back your like results to, to Brian and have it analyze those and make sort of further suggestions? Yes, you can. Brian can analyze your data, tell you what runs have the lowest CDA, and most importantly, to me at least, tell you whether you can trust that data. If the conditions change during the day, if you have crazy lap by lap variability, then Brian's gonna flag it and go, hey, this is a little bit off. Go and do, you know, go and repeat this or dig into it further. And by digging into it further as well, like that expert, not only has Brian got that knowledge base, Brian's got eyes. Yeah. So if you have the luxury of popping a, um, popping the camera to the side of the, uh, side of the track, you can actually then leave a video recording and what we can then do is take a look at your pose on the bike. Now this is early research, but this means that you don't have to have motion capture markers put on your body. You don't need to have inertial measurement units to track where your joints are. Just from a photo, we can then determine where your joints are, tell you about your torso angle and your head angle, and then throughout that testing session, see whether your position has actually drifted throughout the day. So if there is that variability, Brian can say, this is why it is. And the important thing to note still is there is all this information, there is all this data, but the rider doesn't have to worry about it. It's all processed and it's okay. brought to the rider on a silver platter. So then they just know what they need to do to get faster and then win some races. All right, so we've done helmets. Now, obviously, as you can see, I've changed into a time trial skin suit. Now, this is a no pins flow suit. Going to see how it compares to our just kind of standard bike radar jersey and shorts. So obviously, it's great that you know wonderful cycling journalists like myself get to come test this out. But what's the kind of route to market for it, and when might our audience be able to buy a body rocket system? Yeah, very soon. So the system that you're going to be on is a beta testing unit, and we've been out with beta testers for starting in December of last year, and, and so um, had had those that development and testing going, and we're now readying a pre-sale campaign uh, for this fall. So it should be available to buy in September for delivery in April of next year. And uh, in terms of pricing, like what are we talking about? We haven't locked it in yet, but it's going to be somewhere between uh, 2,500 and 3,000 pounds. Okay, so obviously like, you know, that is a big number for a kind of one piece of kit, but if you were to consider how many times you can obviously use it mm. compared to, you know, going to a wind tunnel multiple times, do you, I guess you can quickly see how that could become good value if you're making the most of it. Yeah, I mean, if you, you look at how many days or hours in a wind tunnel, it's not that many. Um, and I, I like to point back to the original SRM and, and say, you know, uh, what are we, 25 years on? And it's about the same price that uh, the original SRM costs. So in, in that sense, it's, it's a screaming deal. What have you been talked into doing then, Simon? Well, I've been talked into doing a pursuit, basically. So a three kilometer race. Um, they've said it's for data gathering purposes, but I, I kind of think they just, they just want to see how rubbish I am. <laughs> So, but I guess we'll find out. We're going to put a number on how rubbish I am. So that's fun, isn't it? So stay tuned for that. Yeah, fun. <laughs> terrible, terrible power numbers. Oh dear. I don't think I'll be. Making the world, world tour next year. <laughs> well, hope you enjoyed your testing today. <laughs> I, enjoyed, I enjoyed the testing. Maybe, maybe not the pursuit. I wish I'd trained a little bit for that. But, um, oh, we should, we should have warned you. <laughs> I didn't know it was happening. <laughs> we should have warned you a little bit for it. Well, let's take a look at the results. So uh, obviously, we started you off in your baseline position yeah. today, which was slightly shorter in reach. And um, that's exactly what Brian recommended, our AI assistant. And... Um, as you can see, you've got a uh, CDA of 0 0.204. We then increased your reach because generally that does tend to find good gains, but we didn't quite find that with you. Yeah. You uh, maybe find it a little bit more uncomfortable. I think it was, you're trying to tuck your shoulders in. Yeah, I was moving around a bit more in that position. So it, it, yeah, it could have been that. I was moving around, I was trying to like, my head was a bit, head position wasn't great, I don't think, but yeah. Yeah, so that did increase your CDA, but maybe you can buy Aero. <laughs> because as soon as you whipped on that cask, you then got a watt saving of up to 13.2 watts. 
So that's just from switching from the kind of road helmet, the Protoni Icon, to the Cast Bambino Pro Evo, the TT helmet. Exactly. Not bad. Not bad at all. <laughs> and of course, this is you going leisurely at a pace. And then when you put on that uh, no pin skin suit you have on now and your cast helmet, you did find a small gain, but obviously it's not at the okay. air speeds that these suits are tested at. Yeah. Therefore, the gains aren't going to be as substantial. Yeah, basically I was too slow for this speed suit to work effectively. And if I'd been, so if you're a much faster athlete, then a skin suit is a good idea potentially. But if you're slower, it's not as big a gain as perhaps a helmet, which is kind of interesting. But as soon as you did open up the taps, yeah. you did start to show your full potential. <laughs> we did start to see the benefits yeah. of that skin suit you have on. Yeah, I mean, hopefully that's not my full potential. I would like to say that I didn't train for it. I didn't know this was happening. I've been, I've been doorstepped and surprised, but you know, for the purposes of this video, you yeah. look pretty fast. <laughs> <laughs> but like, so what was the total saving then from kind of like start to finish? So the total saving from start to finish, you're looking at uh, 9.6 watts. But the big thing we changed was of course your position. Yeah. So if you then found that longer position more comfortable, let's say hypothetically, yeah. you found it more comfortable, then you'd be looking at a watt saving of 20.4 uh, watts. Okay. Which is yeah, and so how and we only, you know we've only did we've only done five five runs there really haven't we and like half a day's testing exactly so in theory you know, we could repeat this as many times as we wanted and keep 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 looking for things exactly and if you had your own system you can go out yourself test as much as you like yeah cool there not bad. <laughs> Right, well, that was really interesting. I think most importantly, it worked, okay? We got some usable data. I could see the data changing as I made changes. I think the big challenge for them is gonna be commercialization. I don't think the price is too big of a factor because, you know, this has the potential to make you much faster than buying a new bike, which could be more expensive. They said they've got a plan to fit kind of 70% of triathlon bikes that you see at the kind of Kona Ironman. But I think road bikes are going to be more difficult. There's simply way more road bikes, way more kind of like you know, saddle rail systems, handlebar systems and all that sort of stuff. And I think that's going to be a bit of a challenge. But the Propel that they showed off, whilst it's not a kind of like, you know, fully complete package, it does look clean, does look integrated. And I think this is definitely one to watch. If you like this video, as always, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you want to see more videos like this, why not watch this one?